we almost forgot to do this week. We almost <laughs> forgot. <laughs> we uh, were sitting watching TV last night, and I was like, oh my gosh, the podcast. Yeah, we're going to do uh, another no edit pod. We're just going to... Um, don't make any mistakes. Don't make any mistakes. We're not going to make any mistakes. Don't, don't talk any shit we need to cut out later. <laughs> Always the thing that takes forever. Yeah, that is always the... <laughs> Kidding. Yeah. Um, no, uh, gosh, it's well, sometimes stitching stuff together into some sort of flow. That's the hard That's part. That's the problem. Yeah, anyway, things have been... Wow, they've been a little busy. Busy as usual. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting more and more base gigs, which is fun. Um, That's so, right, you really are. Yeah, yeah, they're just coming in. I got one from Jenny Shawhan last night. Yeah. Um, thanks again to Ryan Elwood for recommending me. She had... Her regular bassist um, who had to sub it out, and then I guess there was a mistake on dates, and they couldn't actually do it, so she asked Ryan for a recommendation, and he put my name in again. So I'm so I'm so pleased to to be recommended is pretty cool, and to be recommended by someone. It as absolutely good as Ryan, is. You know? Yeah, that's an amazing thing. Yeah, for so, sure. So yeah, I'll be playing bass with Jenny Shawhan um, in mid December, and I just had a gig with Pamela Makala at Swallow Hill. She sold that one out. So very cool. That's amazing. Yeah. Tell me, tell me a little bit about that gig. So, so all female band, great players. Mary Claxton on drums. Uh, she plays with the Burrows up, up north. Um, well, let's see. It's Pamela's first show at Swallow Hill. Swallow Hill is a historic yeah um, music hub in Denver. They've been around for getting close to a hundred years now. Really. I, maybe, maybe at least 50, maybe eight something. Gosh, yeah, I don't knows? even know. I'm not to but, figure it out. But they, um, they've been around for many, many decades. Yeah, and it's this uh, community and educational place. A lot of music teachers teach lessons there. They are generally more focused on um, folky. Yeah, bluegrass. You know, they have a lot yeah. of string instrument lessons and stuff. Right. But um, now it's just it's sold out days before the wow. event. Um, small world. I mean, she's got people who follow her to every show. So I, we were hanging out afterwards. Wow. And there was a long line of people waiting to talk to her. And some people were like, oh, it's so great that we got to see a full two hours of Pamela's original music. I've been following her for five years. I go to every show and I'm like, wow. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I did some AD work with her years and years ago. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I, we just met oh. a few times and... Cool. Yeah. Um... Well, she's figured something out. She's figured something out. Yeah. She's obviously, yeah, not taking any credit or anything. If we just talked through some, mm -hmm. some ideas. But, um, yeah, that's great. Um, and then, of course, your church gigs keep flowing. Yeah. I had a church gig last Sunday. I got another one this Sunday, uh, kind of last minute. Um, and then do you have one next Sunday? No. No. Okay. I think I have, I have this coming Sunday, and then I have one in January. Oh, I'm sorry. That's what, what I was saying. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, you've been Those enjoying are, doing yeah, them? Yeah, yeah, I do. I, I, I do. I enjoy... I think what I enjoy the most is the challenge of little rehearsal. They're oh, easy, right. You know, they're, they're basically easy songs, but, you know, there is a rehearsal, but it's like run through each song once before the service. Right. The morning of the service. And then, any questions? Nope. Okay, moving on. So... <laughs> Um, so that's, that's, you know, the reason I like to play music on stage with people, whether it's singing or playing bass is I like, I like the thrill. Right. That's like, after I stopped water skiing and competing, like that thrill went away and life was kind of gray for about three years. And then I started performing and I was like, ah, I got my, I got my juice again. And so it's more thrilling to be a little more on the edge and you're a little more on the edge with what are basically some easy songs if you just have to get it right you know yeah that pressure <laughs> i i was saying somebody uh saying to somebody just yesterday um the the real thrill of playing live now is the interaction with the other musicians and the and the sort of high wire aspect exactly. of it like we're high, we're, yeah. we're 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 here doing it like you know yeah and and it's less about it, you know it never feels bad getting applause of course, but mm. it's a lot less about that than it is, you know. Doing this thing in this do, moment. Doing this you know. thing in this moment, and there's no mm -hmm. do-overs. There's right. no, like, this is it, you know. Right. Like, yeah, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. And for me, you know, there's a thrill in being a front person because it 
it feels a lot like in, in certain ways the weight of the show is on you because you're managing it very the room. much is yeah but at the same time there's a thrill to being the bass player because no one notices it until you do something wrong <laughs> you know <laughs> so, and, and, and that's what makes bass in a way the other hardest instrument and maybe even more than the front person the most i, I mean well, drums and bass are right I know. there. Yeah, the drums screw up. You got a serious problem. <laughs> yeah, but also bass. I mean, that's yeah. you know, guitar. You can just slop all over the place, <laughs> and, and I do. <laughs> I mainly look like a good guitar player, um, but but with with bass, um, boy, you hit a wrong note, and it really yeah, people really hear it. It really confuses. Even, I mean, you can throw the band off so quickly. I, and when I started doing uh, bass gigs all the time in Florida, you know, because I would do a lot of fill-in uh, gigs on bass, and I started noticing how easily you could clear the dance floor by being just a little off or sort of like losing oh, the groove a little bit. And really? like it would affect people. And I was huh. like, oh, guitar doesn't really do that. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. And he's like, oh, I need to be... I thought I could just like kind of show up and you know uh-huh. do decent. It's like no, you need to be like you need to be locking in because otherwise it's just not stuff stops being danceable. Mm-hmm. Um, well, that's great. That's yeah, so yeah. cool. Yeah, it's, a, it's all good. It's a really fun thing. You've been busy. I have been extremely busy. I'm extremely tired right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, I woke you up so that we could do this podcast this yeah. morning because we forgot to do it before. We forgot to do it, and that's great. And I'm glad to be here. Um, Anyway, he lies through his teeth <laughs> while he drinks this huge thing full of caffeine. <laughs> this, it's this not rock star. that full of caffeine. Okay, Rockstar Recovery for those who who are just listening. It's just basically Gatorade, um, <laughs> with a little caffeine in it. Anyway, uh, yeah, tons of recording stuff. So to to reel back. Um, the band that I've been working with and producing and, and all that stuff halves in. Uh, we had our big studio weekend this weekend, um, which was a really interesting weekend because, you know, I in a way I was doing something I haven't really done before. We were tracking the band mainly live, which, by the way, we'll talk about it at some point, I'm starting to decide that I absolutely hate tracking live bands. <laughs> it's the worst. Um, because you can't focus on any one part. It's kind of, you know, this whole thing. Anyway, uh, but the thing I hadn't done before is I was producing, engineering, and playing guitar live with the band. Ooh. So it was really exhausting to yeah. be paying attention to what everybody was doing in a producer-like fashion, and it's hard to engineer and produce at the same time, especially when you're working with five guys. Um, and uh, But then also to add in playing on top of that. So I was in the control room engineering and then hitting record and then standing up and playing, and there was a window so they could see me, and I was like playing with the band and then looking over and making sure the oh, meters geez. are doing the right thing. And yeah, and it was, uh, I think it was eye opening for everybody. Um, it was a band, you know, great band, but not uh, a ton of studio time. And studio, just like live, is a different animal. And you really, I mean, you wouldn't say it's a different instrument. I mean, the studio absolutely is an instrument in terms of how much it changes and makes records. But as a player, there's a very different thing. It's a skill to be in the studio recording, just like it's a skill to be on stage performing. And you have to develop that skill. And so there were some definite, you know, realizations and a lot of growth. And it was it was really fun to do it. But it was exhausting. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kristen Henry came by and sang back up on one song oh, yeah, on yeah. Sunday. And that was great. And, of course... Got to thank Mateo at Global Sound yes. for, uh, you know, always being a gracious host. And I, I love that studio they have there. And, you know, we just had a great time. And then last night, I was in the studio with Eric Golden. We finished up basic tracks for his album, 
finally. We've been talking about it for a long time. But Eric and I have been working on the songs for this for a year. We started in October of last year. Mm. So we've been writing songs, demoing them, and then we finally uh, finished up our basic tracking last night. So that Excellent. was that was really fun. Yeah. And it went great. Uh, I, I really, it was, everybody from our last session that we talked about, between the last session and this session, everybody really felt like they, f they, they understood the sound we were going for. So there was a lot less negotiating and working through stuff in a lot more like, oh, no, 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 I know what you're going for. Here mm. you go. I was glad to hear that. Yeah, it was, it was great. And, uh, um, yeah, it's just, and, and it's just a great group of guys. Ryan Elwood was playing drums and he's just a machine. It's the same thing every time, <laughs> you know? And uh, yeah, it was just a blast hanging out. Mitchell was engineering, and it was such a relief to have an engineer to worry about that <laughs> side of it. <laughs> right. And I could just pay attention to the music side of it. And it was so cool, too, because there, there was a part where with the bass player, and, and you know, I was doing a little bit of producer -y. Sometimes it's beneficial to let someone else figure out what you're talking about rather than telling them what you're talking about. Even though you know exactly what you want, you can kind of like act like you don't know exactly what you want and kind of like describe it and let them figure it out. <laughs> so they own it. And so they're... it's their idea. But but in a way, it, there were parts of it I didn't know exactly what I wanted, but it, you know, this is a country record. We were doing a cover of Bad Moon Rising by Credence and it, in a country style. And the bass line was just not making it sound country enough. And so we kind of had this whole discussion and you know, got the whole band involved and went through the whole thing. And then someone was like, oh, it's sort of like a J.J. Kale Tulsa thing. And I was like, yeah, it's like Eric Clapton when he was ripping off that Tulsa sound. Um, you, you know, living on Tulsa time and all that stuff. And uh, Lay Down Sally is the Eric Clapton song where he was ripping off those dudes. And um, and the bass player was like, wait, I think I got an idea. And he like nailed exactly what I was talking about, where it was just like get a little root five in there and make it a little mm -hmm. country a little more you know yeah it's amazing what that does i mean because i accidentally fell into that in one of the songs at cody's christmas song rehearsal oh right I, I just couldn't remember exactly what i was supposed to play i mean aside from the roots so i just started playing root fives and i was like whoa this is suddenly a country song like completely because of what i'm doing it 110 percent <laughs> gives you that sound yeah and i love it i'm addicted to it like i could hear it over and over huh. again and bass players never want to do it because they're like oh but that's so generic that's what everybody does and it's like well that's what everybody that's does the language like that's what it is and that's what everybody does because that's what everybody likes so yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, a lot of studio time and uh, continuing sessions today. And boy, it's just going out into. <laughs> yeah. Well, we did a couple of fun things we did. in the last week, or I did two, you did one. Mm -hmm. So the thing we did together was go see the movie Priscilla. Right. Which is Priscilla, um, as in Elvis and Priscilla. Right. Elvis Priscilla Press. Yeah. 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 Um, Later in the movie, Naked Gun. Huh? And there's a movie called Naked Gun. I can't believe you don't know that movie. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Well, I just don't get how it's connected to what... Huh? She acted in that oh, movie. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Anyway, we went to see that movie because we were uh, we're going to see a bunch of movies this year. And yeah, we got a season pass to Alamo Draft House. So. Yeah, we're going to spend our, our bad weather winter... Just in the movie theater. In the movie theater. In we're, fact, we're going Thursday night. Yeah, we're Thanksgiving. going... Thanksgiving. I know, which is fun because it's like, it's kind of a, I guess, I guess my family did it on Christmas where all the cousins would go see a movie, Yeah. but we're going to kind of do that same thing. We're going to do a little Thanksgiving and then we're going to go see a movie. So Priscilla, um, so you, you loved it, right? I loved it. it I, was, I liked it. Yeah. It was a, not so much of a story movie in a way, but a enter a time and place kind of movie and just sort of be there. Clearly there was a story. Clearly there was this romance and then she eventually left him and all that stuff. Uh, but, but it was it, s slow, but it was just like this great period piece of like, this is what yeah. it was sort of like to be there. Yeah. And it was almost like you were inside the relationship. It was right. There was just a lot of room to breathe. And so a lot of room to sink into the atmosphere and I think yeah. that's the strength of the movie. And they, and they really nailed that atmosphere of the 
like late 50s, 60s, mm-hmm. 70s. It yeah. just, it really, the movie felt like those times. I mean, I wasn't around in those times, but it felt like my sense of those times. Yeah. <laughs> and it did a good job of portraying Elvis in a way that like, you really got to see the work that went into being Elvis in a way. It wasn't this image of just like, he's just magically the king or something. Like they had his later years where he was wearing the jumpsuits and the stuff that gets made fun of now. Um, Even though the 68 comeback special is an amazing concert film, it's on YouTube. I highly recommend Mm. Elvis 68 comeback special. Jerry Reed on guitar. It's it, the band is incredible. Okay, we need to put that on the list. Yeah, it's okay. really really good. Anyway, the jumpsuit thing and the guy, but but they were showing scenes of him like trying on the jumpsuits and they had tailors and they were working on it and there were like twenty people in the room and he's like I don't know I feel silly but all these like hangers on are like no man that's great and mm-hmm. you just got this sense they showed a lot of the behind the scenes of what it would take to be that level of star. It, in a way that you sort of could connect it to a modern day Taylor Swift or Britney Spears or like this would take teams of people and it would take a lot of work and it would take a lot of time. And, mm-hmm. you know, and of course it showed kind of Elvis's heightening drug use throughout that time, which mm-hmm. was related to kind of his workload and his pressure and like his inability to sleep unless he took something and mm-hmm. all this stuff. I, I don't know. I enjoyed it, mm-hmm. but I'm a little nutty about Elvis. That's an, I don't talk about it very much. <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> I, 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 cr- I love Elvis. I have a portrait no, I guess of him. I'm, oh, that's true. You y- do. And that's, yeah. Yeah. I've seen that. Yeah. Just not prominent. Really, <laughs> it, it's yeah. something I didn't get it as a kid. I got it into it in my twenties, and I just sort of started realizing, like, I mean, he invented a lot of that. You know, I mean, maybe not. Maybe he didn't have a plan to invent invent a lot of that, but like, it's really like he was the archetype of, you know, mm-hmm. the rock and roll star. Yeah. yeah. In a weird way, but you only liked it. Yeah, I think the pace was a little on the slow side for me. It was definitely anyway. slow. I would not say it's not slow. <laughs> yeah. That, that's all. And and I guess, no, that's not all. I guess the fact that it was uh, a biopic from Pris- Priscilla's perspective and it was really about the relationship. There wasn't, like, it, w- it was, like, relationships are a story to, to a degree, but they're not necessarily written as a dramatic story. So right. things happen as they happen. And it was a little, maybe just because it was more real... It was not like formed like a dramatic movie is normally. There formed. weren't big dramatic moments. Yeah. I mean, like there was a character arc, but it was very like shallow. Yeah. Like it didn't like <laughs> right. Rah, you know? right. It didn't build to a climax and then everything changed. It was just kind of like it, Yeah. <laughs> Twenty years later, now we're different people. <laughs> yeah. As as it happens. I mean as it happens, but Yeah. Yeah. Um anyway, the other thing that I did for fun musically this week was I went to see Depeche Mode in concert. I, I just know. got a single ticket because you were busy and they're not as important to you. It right. was fun going there um, and seeing all of the goth people from high school grown up to my oh, age. That's <laughs> hilarious. I didn't think about oh, that. Oh, yeah. Oh, people were dressed for it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Lots and lots of black, lots of leather, lots of spikes and, you know. That's so you know. fun. Oh, it's so cool. You know, I was... I wasn't a goth in high school, but, like, if I had if I had to pick, that's probably what I would have been. I was just nothing, really. A little of this, a little of that. You were probably just obsessed with water skiing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and just getting my schoolwork done. Yeah. And I was doing sports. Um, so the show was good. I would not say great. Um, sorry to say. I mean, I, I, it triggered lots of memories, which was wonderful. Um, it, was, it was good. It was solid. Um, it just, I would say it wasn't great because I didn't feel like there was a lot of design to the show. It was just playing songs. With big production. With big but, I saw some pictures, not from just from you, but apparently yeah. we knew a few other people who went there and I saw some stuff on yeah. Facebook. Uh, big, huge video screens and yeah. it, it, very huge production. Yeah. I mean, not shock and awe like Muse was or Taylor Swift, but still big. Still very big. I mean, big. it's ballerina. Yeah. Um, so I didn't feel like there was a lot of show design from like a live music production standpoint. Right. Not none, but not a lot. Um, they opened with a song nobody knew, and everybody was kind of like just waiting for it to be over, in my opinion. Yikes. Yeah. Um, and then um, the lead singers, gosh, I keep forgetting his name. Someone told me last night, but not Martin Gore, but the other singer. Yeah. Um, I don't know that he's been keeping his voice in shape. 
You mentioned yeah. that, yeah. I mean, he was mostly good, but from a voice teacher's perspective, I could hear, I could hear some some notes he was dancing around because he couldn't reach them, or notes that were a little flat, or. And and these guys are you know. You know Older. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they've they they started their career in the '80s, so you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it, age is gonna get you some at some point. Right. <laughs> it so, might. It might. I, who am I to criticize? Who knows where, where what I will sound like when I'm. But your point stands it, but, yeah. that there are a lot of things you can do about those types of things. Um, yeah, and it sounded like Martin Gore had been keeping his voice in shape because he led two songs, and it was it was obviously a healthy, flexible voice with plenty of range and yeah, right. sounding great. Yeah. I was thinking about it. I wonder, in some ways I'm starting to wonder if at least for us and at least for us, no, that's not true because the killers were also in an arena mm-hmm. and also big production. Mm-hmm. I was just wondering if some of the big production stuff sometimes makes it harder to get into the music because you're distracted by the crazy oh. visuals and the for Muse that was the case with Muse that was the case for me right where the just like, the there the, was just so much going on I was like I can't even listen I, my eyes are just overwhelmed with what's going right. on right yeah <laughs> whereas we talked about our favorite show that we've seen recently or mine at least Phoenix mm-hmm. which was a breathtaking mm-hmm. Visual experience, but it was in a 2,000 seat room and we were actually close to it. It wasn't like being a football field away from right. these big screens. And also, the production, while it was excellent, it wasn't like explosions and big props. That's and another. It was just the LED screens. Right. And it was more, yeah. yeah, it wasn't always like constantly moving and shifting. Sometimes it was just an image and it was like they were. Yeah. Playing inside of an image. Yeah. And they were really connecting with the audience, which I think is... Oh, yeah. I I don't know if we talked about it here. I think that's one of the things I realized after uh, seeing The War on Drugs is that it felt like they weren't connecting with the audience or performing for the audience. They were just playing their songs and... Yeah. You know... Here's here's a note about Depeche Mode on that front. So we, we noticed that War on Drugs didn't attempt to connect with the audience from our perspective. Right. And that Phoenix really did. Right. Um, it seemed to me like Depeche Mode performed at the audience rather than performing with or, you know, with an, an energy exchange. I mean, they were obviously getting energy from the audience and saying like, you know, he's screaming like, yeah, and, and big stuff like that. But it didn't, f- it felt more like he was performing at us, in my opinion. And I, that's just me. That's a, that is a very important ex- uh, uh, distinction, though. Mm-hmm. Those are two different things. Yeah. And I think the instinct of a lot of people is that that's what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. We've talked about it before, that that kind of recital mindset. Like, right. what's supposed to happen is I'm supposed to get up there and sing and dance. And, and everybody's people will supposed clap to, for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where, you know, we also talk about, you know, the it's the back and forth with an audience that, yeah. you know, is at least my favorite, in my personal yeah, opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, the audience was giving plenty of love because this is a beloved band, has been around for a long time, you know. Uh, and, and a band that it should be said is way more influential than probably they get credit for. Mm. There are a lot of bands, including the Killers, who took a lot of, hmm. you know, cues from them. I mean, they were making a kind of music that was just not made before Depeche Mode showed up. And then after Depeche Mode, there have been bands who also make that kind of music. Right. Whereas they, their particular blend of things yeah. is, you know, no one was doing that before that. Yeah. Well, huge respect. It was really fun to be there and really fun to hear those old hits live. Yeah. Um, How yeah, was, yeah. Uh, sound was good? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sound was great. Yeah, that, that room is, for, for a large room, it always sounds really good there. Yeah. Ball arena? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, and I was up high. I sent you a photo of where I was. <laughs> yeah. I got a fairly cheap ticket, and so I... <laughs> the photo made it look even... Fr- it looked like I was, like, at the top of a football stadium. Looking yeah. <laughs> I, and I was pretty far up. <laughs> but it but, still sounded great. That's great. That's great. Well, uh, another thing we did was Cody rehearsal for his run of Christmas shows. Mm-hmm. So, we've done it... Is this 
the second year? It's the second year. Yeah. Yeah. So Cody puts together these shows that are include some of his original music, but are also a lot of Christmas tunes and and in some cases religious tunes. I mean mm-hmm. some some hymns and um you know, various things and uh but it's just a great little Christmas show and we had our first rehearsal Sunday and I don't know. I thought it I thought it went really well for mm-hmm. being you know, some of those tunes are a little hard. Like some of those uh, Ave Maria is one that he does and like that's that's got some chord changes in it. So mm-hmm. I was I was glad that mm-hmm. it went as well as it did. And mm-hmm. Yeah, anyway, so we got those Christmas shows coming up. and Yeah, I found it. Oh, I texted Nate that like when I went back to practice This Christmas by Chris Brown. Oh, yeah, that's which, a beast of a song. Yeah, that was a hard one for me last year. Um, it's not like I went, like, pulled up my chart and played it right the first time or the third or the fifth, but it fit in my brain better than it did last year. Like, as I went mm. back to playing it, instead of, here's the difference. Here's how it fit in my brain better. I had a chart last year and I, you know, Nate and I worked on it together in a lesson and, and I knew what all of the chart meant, like this chord is this, and, but the way it ended up getting into my head last year was memorizing patterns. It was very visual. Like I'm not thinking, oh, this is the six, seven, six, five. This is the flat three, four, five. I'm, I'm like, I hit this fret, this fret, this fret. Cause I practiced it enough that like, I just had the visual memory of it. Right. This year I'm seeing both. So I'm, as I play, I'm, I'm still aware of where I am in the chord. So there's a connection in my brain between what I'm seeing and what I'm thinking about where we are yeah. in the chord. So that's how it fits in my brain better. It's pretty cool to see. I, that's one where, so it's a cover of a Donny Hathaway tune, and it's, it's got a lot of jazz chord changes in it. Some, some complicated stuff. I mean, some mm-hmm. like tritone subs and like, you know, um, some... I think of them as they're sort of two five ones, but they're chromatic. I guess that's because they're all subs. But so anyway, the point is they're they're very jazzy changes and very sophisticated in some places. And I absolutely I'm on a different way of dealing with it than you because I cannot think of what's happening. <laughs> I have to just like tap into my ears and let my hands just do what they oh do. Oh my gosh! Because I can't I can't think. Like, I can sit down and sort out the theory of that, but yeah. I can't think about it quickly enough to... I'm just not used to playing jazzy-type stuff. But if uh-huh. I just use my ear, I'll do the right thing yeah. because I hear where it's going. Oh, and, interesting. And, you know, and I've heard the tune enough times. I mean, it's a really old song. Yeah. So, but it was weird playing it where I was like, the first time we went through it, I was like looking at my chart and just like, uh, uh, like I'm kind of getting there. <laughs> and I was like, all right, all right, just like shut it off and like... Just hmm. and and it, it worked better for me. Sometimes with complicated chord changes, I I just have to do that. I just have to like really. I mean, it takes some amount of sorting out what's actually happening. But mm-hmm. once I have like, oh, that's why it sounds that way. Then I just have to like do the sound. Hmm. But but yeah, that song's a monster. Actually, to be fair, a bunch of the Christmas stuff is pretty complicated stuff. It might be harder for you. I don't think it, any of it's that hard for me. It's, it's, it's not, I mean, it's not the craziest stuff in the world. It's not Frank Zappa or, Yeah, I just have to know. play one note at a time. <laughs> That's why I like bass. <laughs> That's true. I they get have, to hang with professional musicians while chords. only playing one note at a time. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah, I'm one of you guys. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> so funny. Oh my gosh. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> well, you titled the podcast. Yeah, I'm one of you guys. <laughs> there we go. We always find it at the end. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Can I tag along with you? <laughs> <laughs> that is not how it is at all. Um, no, you are, I, it's it's funny. Yeah, everybody always respects having you around. <laughs> oh, thanks. And, well, so I'm, I'm excited for these Christmas shows. Honestly, I think it's so cool to be doing something. And, and it's also a bit of a, it, it's one artist doing main, mostly just music, but it is a, we're bordering on that variety show thing because we're mm-hmm. doing that thing we talked about last time with Cody where he's going to come out, do a song, a few piano songs, and then you're going to come out and sing and do a duet, and then you're going to leave, and I'm going to come out. We haven't worked all mm-hmm. that out yet. Mm-hmm. But it, 
it it's it's really fun to me to do a show. I just yeah. like stuff that's like a show. Yeah. It's not yeah. just like okay, we're gonna play music for forty five minutes and then we're gonna take a break and play music for forty five yeah. minutes and then take a break. You yeah. know, but it's yeah. an actual show and these Christmas shows really are. They're mm-hmm. you know, they're a real Yeah, it's just like going to see their a journey. show. Yeah. Their and journey. and people always seem to love it and you know, and we've got shows, uh, you know, all over the place, down in the Springs and mm-hmm. all over the Metro. So yeah, this year's shaping up to look good. Yeah, it's yeah, it's gonna be a blast. Well, we do we have anything work. else? No, oh, we gotta get to work. We, yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, there's gonna be some bumpy spots, or there will have been some bumpy spots. I don't know why I'm saying this at the end because we're not editing this one. We're <laughs> firing it out there. <laughs> <laughs> As always, we are sponsored by Performance High. Voice and Music Studio. And also... Rockstar Recovery. Rockstar Recovery. <laughs> drink. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, I don't I don't drink it because it's called Rockstar. It's just a, it's, <laughs> really? It's just the one with the least bad aftertaste. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rockstar. <laughs> the aftertaste isn't that bad. <laughs> Can I hire you to, to write the new tagline for Performance High? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Performance High. Yeah, I'm one of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's cut it. All right. Uh, all right. Thank you so much, and we will see you next week. Bye.